No, we are not stocking a farm today. What you are seeing here is snail mortality from just a single farm. And I know that's the case in various places across Nigeria and, well, Africa. And what most farmers see is just the mortality. What they refuse to see is this, this and this, which are major factors causing the snail deaths on their farms. And that's why in this video, I'll be shedding more light on different factors causing snail mortality, but we'll just be focusing on the snail parasite and snail pest. In subsequent videos, I'll be uploading other factors causing snail mortality. So in order to enjoy that, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified once I release quality videos on the channel. Without wasting much of our time, let's go. Topping the list, we have the insect with various kind of insects possessing the ability to hurt the snails by stinging, biting, and also laying eggs which feed on the snails. While some insect larvae even go as far as eating through the snails and using its shell as incubator before they turn into B2. The most feared ones are the ants, especially the soldier ant, fire ants, and the likes. Well, not all ants are harmful, as some are actually beneficial, as they help convert snail waste to organic matter, which is similar to what the earthworm does in the free-range system, where it converts the feces of the snail back into organic matter that is useful for the plants that the snails can then still feed on back. It's more like a cycle. Just to be sure you had that right, earthworms are beneficial to the snails. Some ants are very dangerous in the sense that even when they don't attack snails, they attack beneficial organisms to the snails like heartworms. When soldier ants attack, they do so in thousands and that is why they are feared by farmers. Well, don't worry, towards the end of this video, I will be showing you how to fight and manage soldier ant attack in your snail farm without the use of harmful chemicals that will hurt your snails. Well, firstly, let's talk about how insects get into the snail pen or greenhouse. Addressing the concrete pen. Firstly, poor flooring is one of the major entry points of insects in the concrete pen as insects enter deep within the ground. And this you can easily see in this empty pen where you can see the entry points. And number two is via opening in the pen, especially when the wood frame is not properly fixed, thus giving entry points to the insects. And number three is true mulching material. That is why I do advise you to treat the dry leaves with hot water before introducing them into the snail pen. This is to make sure all the insects on the dry leaves are removed properly before introducing them into the snail pen to mulch the pen. Same thing with the soil, it should be treated also. And next, leaving the snail pen open for too long. Most farmers are culprit of this. Flying insects within the vicinity can find their way inside the pen when it is left open. That's why I advise you only open the pen you want to work on one at a time. Don't open multiple pen all at once. As for the greenhouse or the free range system, it all starts from the construction stage. Greenhouse should be treated and fumigated before planting, during land preparation and after the net has been fixed. Also fixing the net properly so that there won't be any opening and most importantly, always close the door of the greenhouse whenever you are entering or leaving the greenhouse. The next predators on our list are rodents and reptiles. Rodents and reptiles attack both the eggs and snails themselves by destroying eggs of snails and also targeting smaller or younger snails by biting off the tip of their shells and feeding on the succulent part of the snails. To solve this issue, one should make sure there are no openings that can give them access to the greenhouse. Discovered openings should be repaired. Traps can also be used to control the rodents and reptile issues you have on your farm. Okay, now back to the hands. Even after doing all that is said to be done to prevent the hands from entering, it is not guaranteed that ants like soldier hands won't attack because they have the special ability to dig deep into the soil, create channels that will enable them to gain access to the greenhouse from outside. And that is why it is very tricky to manage the situation when there is soldier ant attack in the greenhouse after you have stocked because one must not use harmful chemical as that will also affect the snails. That is why I will be showing you how you manage the situation when you have such attacks without actually harming the snails. 
but before we do that if you have been enjoying the video so far to this point please remember to like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified once i release quality videos on the channel all right first step to solving the problem is to actually detect them early the earlier you are able to detect them the better all you need is water and detergent any detergent will work like in the video i'm just using a very cheap detergent pour the detergent into a bucket of water then use your hand to mix and agitate the water until the ladder is formed the ladder is exactly what we need sprinkle the soap solution on the ants until they are completely drenched in the solution When the solution touches the hands, the ladder of the soap suffocates the hands and in few seconds this is what you will observe, the hands completely dead. There is no need to worry if the solution touches the snail as it has no effect on them and just to be rest assured, you can rinse the snail briefly in clean water. Try this out when next you have an attack on your farm and give me a feedback. That's it on this one, till next time, a peace.